Hello, everybody, and welcome to my channel. You have reached episode number two. It's called Mudslide of Teen Mom Family Reunion, season number two. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so this is day two, and Caitlin says that they're sharing rooms with their moms. Caitlin says she's excited to get down to the bottom of things, but she's nervous about it. Caitlin says her mom is unpredictable and that's one of her triggers. So Cheyenne says that day one was a lot. It was on 100. She needs it to be all the way down to 30. Cheyenne says she doesn't want to jump off of anything. She doesn't want to be in no dirt. She don't want to be in the trees with no animals, okay? Girl, why did you even come then? Because you know that's what it's going to be about on this damn show. So Jade says that it's very hard sharing your room with a mom who has sleep apnea. She snored all night long. She didn't get a lot of sleep. Love her mom, love her to death. Wanna sleep separate. Oh, Ashley says that she woke up nauseous, but now that she's up, she's extremely hungry, okay? She's in there beep, beep, bopping and singing and all this stuff, getting the eggs out of the freezer. Diana says she's happy to be with her friends, but when she comes into the kitchen, there's Ashley and T. She says she's gonna keep her distance. So, Brianna, you're being very petty. I understand y'all don't like each other, but this is probably how it started. So, T says good morning to Brianna. Brianna just was like, she didn't say it, but her actions were whatever. She didn't answer her back. Brianna, I fear for your life because you're effing with Ashley's mama. Ashley's not playing with you. I'm just telling you before everything goes down. We have all seen the trailers. Ashley is not playing with you. So now you done, you just disrespected her mother. And I'm hoping this fight doesn't happen within the second episode because that's a little early. But it's been tense since I started reviewing this. Listen, and I just, I have never had a season of any show that I've ever reviewed start off so tense. <laughs> ever, ever, ever. So... I don't, I don't know if I should tell you guys that you're in for a treat or what. I just hate conflict, but I do love recapping these reviews for you guys. So let's just move on with the next segment. Brianna says there's no use in talking to them because she knows the type of people they are. Fake as F. And Brianna, look, I do like you a lot more than I used to, but you have your fake moments, lady. So now Roxanne is walking by Ashley and saying, hey, Macy, why can't y'all just say a general good morning? It's just like that at my job, okay? There are two people I do not like at my job, and I don't talk to her, but she don't sit nowhere near me. And the other lady, unfortunately, sits right freaking behind me, but fortunately, I only work with that lady for an hour. When I come in, though, when I come into the office, I'm not spot helloing people, even though I don't like those two people. I come in at night, I say good night, everybody, or I say hello, everybody. If they choose to speak, that's on them. But my hellos and good nights are not for them. And I think they know that. So why couldn't you guys, Roxanne, Brianna, instead of perpetuating the pettiness, which is what y'all are doing, which is why I, I haven't even seen the fight yet, but I already don't feel bad for neither one of y'all. Because y'all are starting the pettiness. Ashley and her mama did not start the pettiness on this season. I don't know what happened last season. I told you guys, I didn't watch last season. We're strictly reviewing season two. And from what I'm seeing, Ashley and T are not the ones starting anything. So Roxanne, you're walking by. Ashley, and like, hi, Macy. Anyway, y'all are so petty. Y'all need to grow up. Roxanne says she doesn't even like looking at T and Ashley. She says, Roxanne says that T and Ashley have done a lot of damage on social media. Roxanne and Brie don't really talk to T and Ashley, and T and Ashley don't really talk to them. And I'm like, damn, guys, we're starting the day off like this? Kaya says that it was so great. No. Kaya said it was good waking up in Oregon today. She's excited to get to know the other ladies, and she's really excited that she's here with Kayla. So Caitlin, Kate, says that she's excited that Kayla and Kaya are there. She's excited to build bonds, build bonds. I'm so tired of hearing build bonds. You know, I miss the days of yore when Teen Mom was just about y'all focus on y'all perspective storylines and keep it pushing. Not this, oh, we're the Care Bears. Let's get all together, arm in arm. And 
let's be this <laughs> let's be this united front of besties mtv who do y'all think y'all are fooling seriously so Kayla says she is excited to meet the girls, looks forward to them being role models and giving her advice. So Cheyenne asks Kayla who has the kids and Kayla says Luke. And then Cheyenne says that she doesn't really know much about Kayla and her mom, only stuff she's seen online. I don't know what the hell Cheyenne asked Kayla because for some reason, and I don't know if it's just my computer or if it's my account, they have not released subtitles for this episode and it's really pissing me off y'all. I'm gonna do the best I can to be accurate, but I can't understand what these people are saying. I don't know what the hell Cheyenne just asked Kayla. She asked her something. I don't know if she said, I keep rewinding it and I can't catch it. So if you guys can rewind it at five, a little after 5.02 and try to listen for yourself, I don't know what the hell she's asking Kayla. So Kayla tells us she met Luke when they were in college. And anyway, she says that she got pregnant. I don't know why she's saying at the end of November as if we know the timetable. I know Kayla's entire story. I know Kayla and Luke's entire story. And anyway, Kayla says to Jade and them that she thinks that Luke proposed to save the relationship, which he did. That's exactly why he did it. So Kayla says that me and Luke were previously engaged, but she called off the engagement. And Kayla says that technically they're not together, but they still live together. Kayla says they still live together at her mom. Wait a minute. At her, at your mom's house? And y'all are co-parenting partners. Why can't Luke go stay with his mama? I thought he was staying with coach. What happened with that? Anyway, anyway. Well, Jamie says that Kayla and Luke sleep in the same room. She doesn't know what the hell they're doing in there. They act like a mother freaking couple. So Jamie, Kayla's mom, says that she doesn't know if Luke and Kayla are a good couple right now. Jamie says that she thinks they both need some work before they can work it out. Diane asks Kayla if it's worth making it work. Sometimes it's very difficult for me as somebody that does recaps and reviews to understand what these people are saying because they're literally just living their lives a lot of the time and the way they speak is not always conducive for translation. But Kayla's response to what Cheyenne asked was I think we need to draw a line in the sand and decide whether we're going to stay together or not. Kayla says that, you know, she's hoping to get some clarity at this reunion in regards to back home because they can't keep living together yet they're technically not together. So Ashley gets a phone call and she tells, she tells us that Barr calls her every single day from jail. She says he calls her multiple times from jail. Ashley's really simplifying this jail thing with Barr. She basically says that Barr's just being held because he's in a different state. But once he shows up in the correct state, all is going to be well. He's going to be fine. Nothing else is going to happen. Ashley, you are in a dreamland. And this man is going to serve some kind of time. I don't know how much time, but I do know that I watched the most recent episode of uh, Teen Mom recently, like everybody else. And I'm pretty sure he said he was up for like six years, if I'm not mistaken. Five or six years or something like that. Oh, now Amazon Prime, I get some, or is it MTV that's doing this? Now I get some type of subtitles. Barr tells Ashley that they're sending him to California. Okay, that's why she's sitting here crying. I don't understand why she's crying for though, because you're not even home. I mean, you're not even, it's not like you're in Nevada right now waiting for him to come home. You're in Oregon. Everybody else sees Ashley crying and Margaret says, I don't know what's going on, but I see her mom's over there with her and I hope she's all right. Ashley says that Barr is being extradited. California has decided to come and take custody of him so he can fight the charges in California. All because Barr's smart behind decided to not go to a court case. Ashley says that this court case in California is gonna hold a lot of weight and if he can't fight it from home, he's gonna be forced to fight it from jail, which means he's going to be serving some time. So T says to Ashley, I don't know why I wanted to call her Tiffany just now. T says to Ashley that, you know, we have to pray Barr out of this and we can't do this when your mind ain't right. He says, we have a job to do at this point, and this is hard for my family. Barr's making it hard on y'all family. Ashley made it hard when she got involved with Barr. Should've never had a baby with that fool. He ain't never been right. I've been watching Barr and Ashley since Young and Pregnant, and I'm still asking myself, why is she with this, this guy? I, I just, I can't for the life of me understand. 
because he brings nothing to the relationship. He ain't working. He stay in jail doing dumb stuff when he's not in jail. I get tattoos on his eyebrow. He got that during Young and Pregnant. T says there's a lot going on with Ashley right now and she shouldn't have to deal with this. Bar's not here and her plate is overflowing and it could not be worse timing. Ashley says that hearing that Barr is going to be extradited makes her scared. Ashley says that he's facing a lot of time and this is the worst news that she could possibly get while she's away. So Kate asks Ashley if she's okay and Ashley says she's just depleted and Ashley tells us that she likes some of the people there but she doesn't want anybody up in her business and uh, I can totally relate. Ashley, you have enough problems and you worried about Roxanne. She's telling her mother here that if Roxanne keep trying her, she gonna knock her down to the ground. Good Lord, this is only episode two, y'all. T says, what's up? And Ashley says, Roxanne's playing too many MF and games with me. She sees her, she walks by her so close, like she's not gonna move. She said, you better move out the effing way from me. So Kate is here with Kaya and she says to Kaya, what's going on? There's some tension going on. And Kaya says, between whom? Kate says, like, between Ashley and stuff. Kaya says, well, me and Ashley got into it on social media, but to be honest, it was BS. So Kaya says she started a business, and Ashley also started a business. It got out that Ashley was copying her business ideas. So Ashley gets on IG. She makes this entire post about how she doesn't have to steal anyone's business ideas. And then she was throwing low blows, things that she knew had to do with her without her having to say it. Kaya says when she confronted Ashley about it, she said, well, if the shoe fits. Kaya goes on to tell Caitlyn she feels like Ashley picks on certain people and that's not okay. Mother versus mother situation made her not want to deal with neither one of them. She says that T got on social media talking about her. She doesn't think that Ashley or T or are genuine. So Kate says, so they're kind of the same. Kate, you talking about you're neutral. Please stay Switzerland in this situation because the way you're talking, when Ashley finds out that you're talking about her like this, trust and believe she's not going to like you as much as she says she does. I mean, when you listen to stuff like this and you want to stay neutral, be neutral. Don't have an opinion of, of, about Ashley, but anyway. Kaya says that T is just an old version of Ashley. Caitlin says, I don't know if Ashley just can't talk to people or if she feels more protected by the computer screen. You can go behind people and talk about them. Kate, you are delving into very dangerous territory right now. Kate says that we should all be able to be a group of supportive people because even our close friends don't understand what we're going through. So now everybody's by the pool. They're uh, relaxing. They got food. They got y'all living the life over here. Damn. So anyway, um, they're really not saying too much. They're really not saying too much things that are important, except we have a segment here with April and Caitlin. Caitlin is telling April to give Coach B a chance. She's hoping her mom comes out of her comfort zone. And April says she doesn't want to cry. So April tells us that she knows that Kate is big on therapy. She's just worried that Coach B is going to portray her as a bad mom. The biggest issue that Kate was talking to April about was the fact that she shuts down and she doesn't communicate very well. So when April shuts down, when she does start to communicate, it is anger. Anger comes out. So Kate asks April, did you feel that you were able to talk to your mother? Um, were you fearful or were you allowed to talk to your mother? And the sad thing that April responds to Kate with is that she felt like her mother never loved her. She said she remember one day that she walked up to her mom to give her a hug. Her mom was like, get away from me. Lynn says that's a lot of the reason why you're so defensive and why you are the way that you are. April says, remembers feeling like her mom didn't love her. And Kate was like, of course, look at how you were treated. Kate is really hoping that her mom can learn some new things and some new ways to cope. So now Coach B is here and April says she's getting anxious, all right? Roxanne says that she's apprehensive because last time she saw Brianna jump off that cliff. They're going to do a team building exercise as every, obviously every episode is going to be like this. And what the team building exercise is, in case you guys don't have a visual, it's like tug of war. And on the right hand side, the moms are going to be on the right hand side. And on the left hand side, you're going to have the daughters, but the daughter is going to be inside of a mud pit and the goal is for the mom to gently, gently pull 
her daughter towards her in the mud. That's how it's gonna go. Ashley and T actually were inside because Ashley didn't feel well. T said she wanted to go hang by the pool and she didn't want to be a dud, but she didn't want her daughter to be in there by herself. This team building exercise is going to be working on intergenerational issues. Kudos to me because that is a long freaking word. Intergenerational. <laughs> I told you guys they're gonna be in a mud pit. So Macy says, getting dirty is nothing. Like, she's used to it. But these other girls, she's a little concerned for them. Kate says she's nervous about explaining things that she's never had to explain to April, or duh, to her mother before, and how April's gonna take it. She knows that there's been some bad tension between Ashley and the other moms, but Caitlin says that she's a very neutral person, so she's gonna go check on her and T because she feels like they really should be involved in the things that they're doing. So April and Kate, they go and they knock on Ashley and T's door and they say, hey, how are you guys? Are you guys okay? And they tell them what they're gonna be doing that day with the mud pit or whatever. Ashley says, since she likes Kate and April, she's gonna go. Okay, everybody's at the mud pit at this point and Margaret says she's not going in there. Kaya says, what are we, some pigs? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh so hard. But Ashley's the first one to volunteer. And I explained to you guys, this is kind of like a tug of war where moms are gonna be on the right, daughters are gonna be on the left inside of the mud pit. So Coach B asks Ashley, what do you wanna work on with your mom? And by the way, just like the last video that I did, this is the exercise. So every mom is gonna have a, a, a issue with her mom. And um, I guess the mom is going to interact or whatever. And as she's interacting with the daughter about, you know, the, the problem that they have, the moms are gonna be pulling the daughters towards them, okay? It's in the mud. Ashley says, her issue is her mom not trusting her to make the decisions that she was raised to make. T cries as she's pulling Ashley gently, ever so gently, and says that she's trying to protect her from the hurt that she's felt. Coach B asks, from what hurt? T says, from abuse, basically T says from abuse, which includes actual, okay, add a S, drugs, lies, abandonment. She says that she's the way she is because she wants to protect Ashley from all that. Ashley says that her own defensiveness protects her and T says that she'll always protect Ashley. So then T says some, sometimes she also feels the need to protect Ashley from Barr and I'm not gonna lie when T said this I paused because I was like I hear you. I hear you. She's telling the 100% truth. I go way back with Barr and Ashley, and T never liked Barr for Ashley. Now, she tolerates him because she loves her daughter, and her daughter wanted to marry this fool, and he's a fool. I'm sorry. But T never liked Barr. Sometimes she feels like she has to protect her from Barr. Everybody paused, I feel. T says she's protecting her from dynamite, and she sees that dynamite between her and Barr. He had it with her ex and it can be very dangerous. And then T says that her family has a tendency to have a lot of mouth. And Coach B says, well, the, you know, you blow, you go low, you blow low. You know what I'm saying? Like she hits low blows and she says the lower that we cut, the lower we show how low we are. So Ashley says that it's clear that her mom's temper has been passed down to her. She says that they need to work on being more open to communicate and less quick to be defensive. He says that she cannot change the past, but she's open to growth. So Roxanne gets up here and says what Coach B says about Ashley and her mom is clearly true. The rage and the anger has been transferred between mom to daughter. Roxanne, you was talking in the last episode saying that T be all up in the Kool-Aid and don't know the flavor. She be all up in everybody's business. But the relationship between Ashley and T is none of your business. And here you are and putting yourself. And Brianna says, all of that felt fake between T and Ashley. She said T had no tears in her eyes. Who are you to govern how someone expresses emotion? You were a distance away. How do you know she didn't have tears in her eyes? How dare you? How dare you? Disrespect the fact that T shared her personal freaking story of, of the R word, because we're on YouTube, 
and she shared these things in front of y'all and you have the nervous sit here talking about i think all of that was fake i'm about ready for ashley where's ashley with this spit because i'm sick of i'm sick of the both of y'all i'm really sick of the both of y'all at this point on this show i kind of wish i don't know i don't want to wish that i haven't watched this and didn't recap it but it's really changing back my opinion of brianna and roxanne if i just focused on team mom what is it now next chapter because I, I didn't know team mom grandma i forgot but if i had just focused on y'all episodes in teen mom next chapter y'all would just be poly poly princess and her mom you know still and here on this reunion i've really changed my view about y'all again it's back to the way it was when i started reviewing this damn freaking franchise so brianna volunteers next she says she doesn't know what she's gonna say so she's gonna say whatever comes to her heart Brianna says that the problem with her mom is that she raised her up to be so strong because she's such a strong woman and that it's led to the place where she doesn't know how to show emotion and she doesn't know how to feel feelings and she thinks that's because of Roxanne. So Coach B asks Roxanne, where does she put her emotions and why did she suppress? Roxanne says she dropped the ball so many times uh, with the girls and she says she doesn't want her kids to see her struggling. So she has to suppress all her stuff so they don't see her going through it. Diane says watching Brianna and her mom makes her heart hurt because she can see the pain in Roxanne's face. So Brianna says it was nice to see her mom get emotional. What? Bro, what are you talking about? Hey, I'm sorry. I'm reading notes and I'm asking myself, is that what I really wrote? And that is actually what I really wrote. That it was nice to see my mom get emotional. It was nice to see something different from my mom. It's actually what Brianna really freaking said about Roxanne of all people. Roxanne says, you don't realize how much you've been carrying until you identify it and acknowledge it. She says that she wants to be strong for Brianna and that she needs to work on being more vulnerable. So next up is Kate. She says she's nervous and scared um, because she doesn't know how her mom is gonna take what she has to say. So Kate says, April says that she's worried about what Kate has to say. Well, Kate says she's sick of being the perfect child. She's the one that literally has it together and put this in quotes. She has to have it together. She has to be the perfect child. So Coach B asks Kate, who is the mom in the relationship? And Kate says, it's her, but I feel like I am. Kate says that she doesn't feel like her mom has a good way of expressing emotions. It always comes out in anger. She says that when she tries to express how she feels to her mom, she'll throw, Ty April will throw Tyler in the mix and say something like, that's what Tyler would tell you to do. Coach B says to Kate, so April gaslights you to think that your opinion is invalid. So April, starts really pulling on this rope i mean guys it was it was weird i personally think it was like she was charged with energy but it's all about her and her emotions and her guilt and i don't think i don't even think that april april even realizes that she's putting herself and her feelings above kate's so i think it was just the therapy of it all but she needs to, she needed to relax a little bit. Brianna comes on in the confessional and says that April was so aggressive pulling on the rope and pulling Kate. It was such a weird situation. And Jade says that watching Kate in April made her feel sad. Coach B says to April, you have to stop making this about you and let Kate have her moment, okay? And April drops the rope and Coach B says, you just gave up on her. Cut to commercial. Okay, we're back from commercial. And <laughs> Kate says April throwing the rope was a visual representation of how they communicate and that's how their relationship is. And Coach B says to Kate, how did you feel when April dropped the rope? Kate says it felt like she was mad and upset at me. And April says that was my reaction. Coach B says if it's not going April's way, pretty much, you know, and then April looks at Coach B and says, I don't like you. You don't like her because she's telling the truth, okay, lady? Then April says that Coach B's irritating her very much right now, but she knows that she has to get through this and hopefully it'll help her and Kate in some kind of way. So Coach B tells April to gently pull Kate in at a pace that will work for her. April says she can do it. Kate says she never told her mom she felt like she had to be perfect before and getting it off her chest makes her feel lighter. April says what Kate told her about having to be perfect devastated her because she never realized she treated her that way. Kate says she's proud of herself that she was able to express these things and that they have a long way to go. 
Next is Kayla and Jamie. Jayla says she knows what she wants to say to her mom, but she doesn't know how her mom is gonna take it. So Kayla's issue with her mom is her mom respecting her as a mother. So Jamie heard her and said that she needs to learn how to handle letting Kayla do things on her own and not do it for her. Kayla says, you don't fix it for me, you criticize. So then Coach B asks Jamie, how much of yourself do you feel wasn't good as a mother? Jamie says she's failed Kayla and she sees Kayla doing the same things that she did. She wants to empower Kayla. So Coach B asks Jamie, what makes Kayla a good mom? Then Jamie responds with, you're living in my house with your baby daddy. Jamie, you need to work on your content and delivery, okay? Because that was not complimentary. Kayla says, see, that was supposed to be a compliment, but that's an attack. So Coach B says to Jamie that you empower her, but then you also disempower her, which I've never heard that word before. I guess that'll be word of the day. I should have word of the day on these videos because I'm always learning a new word. Anyway, so Coach B again asks, what is good about Kayla? And Jamie says, Kayla's a good friend and she's a good daughter. So they go ahead, give each other a hug, mwah, mwah, you know. And Kayla says, <laughs> Kayla says she hopes her mom is listening to Coach B and learns how to communicate. She says that it feels good to get that off her chest because it's something she's been feeling for a long time. Kayla says also on her part, she wants to work on having a more positive outlook on finding solutions. So Jamie says as far as giving Kayla encouragement, she's gonna learn how to be positive without the butts. <laughs> So all the ladies, as you can see, jump into the mud pit and get muddy. Oh, well, minus a couple. And that's it. They go back to the house. They all take showers. All right, so they're in the house and everybody's in here having little unimportant side conversations. Okay, these are not important. These are not integral to the review. Bar is on the phone with Ashley and she says that she does wish she was here. She's telling him on the phone she's doing everything that she can do. She's literally like, you know, she's pretty much has separated herself this entire, you know, this entire reunion. She's he and April's having their little side conversation, their little encouraging conversation about. He says that Barb being locked up couldn't have come at a worse time with them being vulnerable and being there. All right, so the ladies are over here talking at the table, all right? And I guess at this point, T ended up coming to the table because she's going to be sitting at the end of this table in a minute. They're just talking about, oh, you know, we're a lot alike and all this positive stuff. And then Kate says, you know, we shouldn't be talking behind each other's back and stuff like that. Roxanne starts blowing off at the mother freaking mouth, y'all. This is why I'm like, now I'm understanding that you and your daughter provoked Ashley and T to wrath. I do not condone violence. And I know I joked earlier asking where the spit was. I don't condone spitting on people either, but I understand what led to that point because y'all are relentless. Y'all don't know how to leave stuff alone. This was not the situation to bring that up, Roxanne, unless you wanted to, I don't know, get beat up. So this is T's face. After Roxanne says, well, to get it from a mom in the group is bad. Now you're just provoking people, Roxanne. You need to keep your mouth shut. So anyway, T says, Roxanne, what exactly is your problem? She says it very calmly. Roxanne is going off at the mouth. She's saying your daughter, your, her daughter's sitting there. Notice um, Ashley's sitting there with a chair backwards and her facing forward, if you guys can keep that in mind, okay? So Roxanne is like, your daughter was all in the business talking about my daughter, talking about who she's dating. That's none of y'all effing business. All I know is this is what this conversation led to. Well, I don't want to hear it. You Roxanne. have nothing to say to me. I just know a war is about to go down. I don't give a f Hold on. Hold on. I don't give a f I don't give a I don't give a f I don't give a I don't give a I don't give a I don't give a and that is how the show ended because MTV hates us, okay? <laughs> Guys, I'm really sorry. I told y'all I would have this posted by 3 p.m., but I'm literally finishing this review at 2.55 and it's gonna take a minute for me to upload, okay? So it will be a little after three. Do not kill me. Next time, I will set it for 3.30 or 4 o'clock. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. Make sure you put your comments in the comment section. I wanna know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.